These majestic females go up to the sand to lay their eggs, and when they hatch, they've got a mystery of things waiting for them. And did you know that when a turtle hatches, it has something in its brain that makes them remember where it was born. So when it comes back to lay its eggs, it goes in the same beach. The sun rises and the fishermen go out to fish and they put their nets out and hope to catch some fish. But by mistake, they sometimes catch these turtles and they will either kill them for their meat, their oils, and they believe their medicine, or they will call a rescue service and the rescue service will rescue the turtle. And this was one of the fishermen that rescued the turtle. We have just been called by a local fisherman to come on a rescue to save the turtle. This is the turtle that has been rescued. He is a green turtle. We have found the turtle, now we are going to take him to the rescue service, tag him, weigh him, and then see if there's anything wrong with him. If all of this is clear, we will set him free and by today. We're going to weigh the turtle. <laughs> he is 52 kgs. The turtles get tagged because just in case they get caught or they come back to be rescued, we know their medical history and know how to heal it. Now we are taking Bahati back to the ocean to be set free. As you can see, we've tagged his arm, so just in case he gets by mistake caught again, we know who he is. And now Bahati has been set free. Local Ocean Conservation is a not-for-profit organization committed to the protection of Kenya's marine environment. We run several programs in the organization and I'll just take you through some of the programs that we do. We have a nest monitoring program which involves us patrolling the marine park beach every single day of the night during the year to monitor or to look out for nesting mothers and for nests that are about to hatch. We have monitored over 1,000 nests and protected over 87,000 hatchlings that have made it successfully back into the water. And then we come up with the bycatch program. Bycatch is rescuing turtles from the fishermen and releasing them back into the ocean. We have rescued and released over 20,000 turtles back into the ocean. 
and then through the bycatch program we come across sick and injured turtles and that's how we come up with the hospital any sick or injured turtle is then admitted into the hospital treated and released back into the ocean we've rescued uh, we've treated over 600 patients that have come through the hospi hospital Today we have a young conservationist who's Jaden Collis and he is going to tell you the story of our work. Thank you. There's only one straw, said eight billion people. This is Polly, one of the rescued turtles here at this conservancy. And Polly is a hawk's bill. She was washed off on shore and she has a head injury. Hawk's bills are critically endangered and they are like the southern white rhinos or the northern. And um, they are like Nigene and Fatu, very, very endangered. But the green turtles are like the elephants they are endangered and they're getting to critically endangered like the hawk's bills and the difference between a hawk's bill and a green turtle is if you look at the mouth it's more pointy and used for like eating meat and like so these are carnivores and green turtles they are omnivores because when they're babies, they eat meat, but when they're adults, they're strictly herbivores. This is another rescue. This turtle called Karembo, she was found three days ago with a spear through her back on her shell. And this, is a green turtle if you see the green turtle the mouth is not as pointy as the hawk's bill and this is a baby green turtle so she will eat a bit of meat and um, a bit of plants as an omnivore but when she's older she'll be absolutely strictly vegetarian this is polar again and I have come back after one day and she is all, almost completely recovered. She is so strong and this is how good the local ocean is. They help turtles everywhere. Now I'm going to feed her. This is Pole, and we are going to take him for a sea bath. This means we will introduce him to the sea again after three months, and we will help him to get more comfortable with the sea, and then she will be free. We are going to attach these balloons onto him so we can track where, where she goes, and, this is, and if she goes too far, we will just bring her back. Due to a spear in her head, um, she has had some neurological damage, so we have to be careful when we release her. Anti-poaching, looking out for evidence of poaching. Turtles are protected by law today, although we still have people who are still clinging to the old habits of poaching turtles. And it, 
takes our team to go out into the communities that are living closer to the ocean, walk, survey, and collect evidence of poaching. Bits and pieces of shell, full shells, whatever is from turtle remains. It comes back here, we sort, and we can tell how many turtles have actually been killed, and over 700 carcasses have been collected through our efforts. We also do community outreach and development because education is the key to everything. And we have to sensitize the community. They have to understand why we need to, com to conserve the turtles and also help them come up with alternative income generating activities. That way, there is the pressure of the turtles while they, they rescue the turtles. And then conservation education is the other thing that we do. The children are the future and we are glad to work with local schools, international schools, universities, colleges, anyone who's happy to learn about turtles and we're happy to take them through that. We also run a marine scout program which involves a group of eight kids between the age of 8 and 12 from our flagship school Dongo Kudu that's about 200 meters from us. They come in we involve them in activities like turtle rescues. They sometimes help us to clean for the patients in the hospital, but the whole aim is to educate them on conservation knowledge in general. And the good thing is they become ambassadors. They go out and spread the word for us. We also do mangrove restoration. Mangroves are best foraging and breeding grounds to some of the marine species. But the threat we're seeing is that the community chops them down for building material, firewood, and whenever they're digging for bait, they destroy these areas. So we take the step to restore. We cannot do the whole forest, but whatever we manage, we go out and restore, and over 200,000 seedlings have been restored through our efforts. And the last thing we do is beach cleanups. Pollution is a global thing. We cannot control it, but the least we can do is lift as much as we can. And because we're working close with the schools and the communities, we involve them into participating. It gives them a sense of ownership and awareness. And we have managed to do 35 cleanups with the communities, three cleanups with the schools, that was last year. And this year, despite COVID, but we have managed to involve the communities and we have done over 26 cleanups. Kahindi, and today I will be interviewing him. Kahindi, how long have you been at the local ocean? I've been working with the local ocean for the past 20 years. Kahindi, what is happening to these turtles in the ocean that you have to keep on rescuing them? Thank you. What is happening out there? We have fishermen who are fishing on daily basis and at some point that was do forage in the same grounds fishermen are fishing on daily basis. While they are fishing that was get caught and when they are caught then there are two options. One, the fishermen have been killing them for the meat, shell and oil but then right now through the education awareness introducing the turtle biocatcher program they are able to contact us. Uh, they guide us in where we could find the turtle, we rescue the turtle. The ones which are healthy, we shall tuck them, take all the details that we need, set them free in the marine park. The ones which are unhealthy, injured, these are the ones that we bring them here for treatment and we usually guided by our vet plus other uh, vets that we do collaborate with. So fishing is one, but what other things are affecting these sweet turtles? That's an excellent question. Um, at least the thirty percent of the turtles that we we get and uh, admit in our water rehabilitation clinic, they would come uh, from uh, what we call uh, fibropapillomatosis. This is a disease which is chemically related, and uh, there is a theory which says that the chemicals that you deposit in the ocean have a big contribution towards. Um, this disease. Uh, so pollution is one of the biggest threats that we do have. Plastic. Turtles usually in, um, eat jellyfish. If there is a plastic in the water floating, turtles mistake them as jellyfish and therefore they, would, they usually ingest and cannot be digested. So blockages have been one, some of the turtles that 
we have just at the moment. Then uh, we've had uh, quite a number of turtles wash the show from being um, the strings from nylon bags. They should wrap them on their flippers and end up being washed ashore with bad injuries around the neck plus the flippers. There are some of the turtles that we keep here and they usually take really long before they heal. Some of them will have to even amputate the whole limb for them, uh, for us to give them another chance to survive. Yeah, we do, we've got a beach development. So we have uh, the areas that the turtles do come to lay their eggs. They've now been used by developers and when the turtles do come back finding a suitable site to lay their eggs they find this uh, this place has been occupied for commercial purposes We have just rescued another turtle and what are we what we're going to do now we're going to take him to the local ocean and get him checked tag him and then set him free now we're gonna weigh him this turtle is 6.925 kgs the last turtle we rescued was 52 kgs and this and look at the difference. Um, this turtle was found in a net and he was by catch. This means he was caught in a net by a fisherman by mistake. And now we're going to tag him. third rescue I've been on. This is a green turtle and he has already been tagged before so this is his second catch. Um, this is a, a parasite that clings to turtle no, shells. No, no, no. Our two, uh, our two rescues of the day. Sometimes the rescues go up to a number of around 12 in a day. We're about to release the two catches today. Okay, here we go. And that was Titan and Hope Freedom. Dr. Hindi, yes. please tell us more how we can prevent um, these turtle injuries and these turtles getting sick. Thank you. What I've discovered through experience, education and awareness is a very powerful tool to the communities. Fishermen that I know who have been participating in poaching turtles are now participating on the on the turtle rescue program. We have a, the the people who are doing a development on the beaches, which um, which end up encroaching the nesting beaches or nesting grounds. There are those who are doing it but unaware that what they are doing is wrong and is impacting turtles' life. Again, by passing them the right information why it is important for them not to encroach those grounds, then they would understand and therefore come up with the better measures on how they can leave those nesting grounds safe. Education awareness uh, regarding sustainable fishing practice is again one important thing that it has to be passed the fishing communities and um, by making the fishermen why turtles are conserved, all the importances then that will change the minds of the fishermen so they can stop from poaching tea um, to releasing them. And then by stopping dumping 
plastic and all toxic materials in the marine environment that's another important information that should be shared so long as it is known by the communities about the threats they are, uh, they are doing in our marine environment so in a in a simple term educational awareness concerning conservation of turtles is the most important tool that the young generation have got to understand and for them to as well participate fully thank you kuhindi for helping us by telling us more about these turtles now i hope everyone tries to help and this is how you can help you can also help by stop using single use plastic and if you do don't throw them on the beach you can recycle them and also stop toxic waste Single use plastic is terrible. It's killing everything. As you can see, this is what is inside a turtle. But because of humans, it's changing. There's plastic, more plastic, and more plastic that's entering the turtle's body and that's killing them to die. eco-friendly.